like it out here in the good, clean, fresh air. You know, small towns, and just ranch, and solitude, doing your thing. As long as I can remember, even before I went to school, I liked grass. I was in the service for a while. I come back to South Dakota. My two brothers, they did the same thing, only they were a little older than me. And we all formed a partnership deal. And we farmed quite a little land west of Clear Lake. A partnership with three people, there's always somebody left out, and I figured that was me. <laughs> so. I thought I'd better find a change. I remember one time when I was plowing, my dad says, you gotta get over to the fence closer so we can get two more rows of corn there. Well, of course, I didn't argue with my father. I thought, there's always some corn droppage and then a nice grass strip would be nice for wildlife and the cows could lay down on that strip when they got filled up. I did it anyway, because I was told to. And I just thought, I just like grass too much to plow that good grassland under. It just bothered me. So I just kind of thought, I got to find something a little different. We got together, I think things just kind of led on from there. It just kind of melted together, I guess. We never had any arguments at all how to do things. He and his brother were together and one of them said something about meeting me in. First thing I knew why one of them was over helping me with the gate and that was Herb. So that's where we went, the gate right here on the ranch. If you live long enough with somebody, you kind of adapt everything that they feel. Whether you want to do it the same, that's your choice. Well, the original ranch was 800 acres. We just kind of kept adding it onto it all the time. It got bigger and bigger. My wife says to me one day, when do you ever want to quit buying land? No, I says, I want to go from the tower road down here to the highway 715 up west of Clear Lake. <laughs> well, of course, that was daydreaming, but I made the statement, if I ever get to the right place, I can look down on this place and say that's always going to be grass. Well, it's a family business. <laughs> uh, most days it's really great, and some days you swear you're 12 years old again. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a family business. You know, we've all developed kind of our niche and our um, area of expertise. We've also subscribed to the same theories that they have too. Um, as far as grass is a permanent part of this place and it's a very important piece of our ecosystem in Dual County. It's important to our economy in Dual County and into the state as a whole. It's a series of events and a series of decisions that bring the conservation to a head here on the Bluebell Ranch. So they're making decisions not to judge a thing or a plant or an animal on its exact value and worth today for what they can understand, but realizing that even if they don't understand it, it likely has value and worth and has a place in the system and they're trying to preserve that. You can try and beat things, but it works better if you just work with them. So if it's in grass and that works, it makes a lot more sense. You just kind of try and work with what's going on at the moment. You kind of learn over time that the moment's not quite as important as the long term, but by the same token, you have to deal with the moment immediately and try and not make a decision that'll affect it badly in the long term. Well, we rotate quite a bit, and we're very careful we do it at the, what we think the right stages are. I like biocontrol, 
very much so. The right amount of cattle. We was very careful not to overgraze it. That was really the main thing, because out in this country, in eastern South Dakota, if you got grassland left over, it seems like you're wasting all that grass. And I just never looked at it that way. I thought that's a good reserve and it makes it stronger. And I always worked on the theory, you never want to fight Mother Nature. Mother Nature is going to win. You can try, but it's, it's hopeless. You would be surprised what people will try to farm. When you plow it, you've ruined thousands of years behind you with one drop of the plow that can never go back to the original. Me, I'm just kind of a small time operator. I'm bucking some great big ranches out in western South Dakota. I don't know, they just asked me what we were doing. Pete says, I always admired the way you did things. And I says, well, I don't know. I didn't know I did anything extra. I did what I think was right. And well, he says, Joe and I are gonna recommend you for the Leopold Award. Pete says, we're gonna do the best job we can in writing you up because we think we're, you're doing the right thing. You know, from the sponsors and the, uh, and the, the organizations that really support the Leopold Award, um, there's, this, there's a theme, and that theme is, you know, it's conservation, but it's also family, integrity, and just basically living the story that's being told. And that's what's interesting about the Hamans is that they truly live the conservation story. As you look behind me, you see native prairie for, for miles. The Bluebell Ranch and the Hamans here are really the anchor for the southern end of the Prairie Coteau. This is kind of the last stronghold of wide open native prairie, no trees, minimal disturbances in between. It's a large intact chunk of grass and that's super critical and important for a lot of species and that's why we're here. I cannot go along with draining a, a wetland. I mean that's mother nature's filter and you're spoiling that and you're fighting mother nature again. So I, I like wetlands for that reason. If you plow under the grasslands, that's a perpetual decision, and you'll never be able to get native grass back to where it was. And we're talking, you know, upwards of 200 species of different grasses and, and forbs in, in the native side, and plowing it just, uh, just completely diminishes a lot of that value. The whole Heyman family uh, are well versed on the values of the grasslands and what can be done on it. Uh, it isn't something that you, you do for monetary reasons. You do it because of, it's the right thing. So a hundred years from now, if they can improve on something that I can't improve on, more power to them. <laughs>